So while in NTSC and PAL regions, Klonoa, Door to Phantom Mile is only available on PS1 and on PS3 in NTSC regions, Klonoa in Japan had a Best for Family re-release and was ported to PS2 via the Nam Collection, a Japan-only collection of Namco games. The differences between these versions are negligible minor bugs, quirks, and visual differences, most of which are with the Nam Collection version. Meanwhile, the Nam Collection's level transitions are smoother and have faster load times thanks to being a native PS2 game. And as you'd expect, the PAL versions run slower than intended due to poor PAL conversion. Now, prior to the upcoming Wii remake of Klonoa, the PS1 version was actually ported to Java for mobile phones on the iMode service in Japan. If you want to look more into this version, there is a fantastic article about it on the Lost Media wiki, which is where this info comes from. Which, yeah, this port is considered Lost Media. With the shutdown of the iMode service in 2021, the only media that exists at the port are press release screenshots and a gameplay video. The opening FMV was an optional download due to its file size, otherwise most cutscenes were images with a few moving sprites, and level sections and deaths were met with long load screens. This version actually had arbitrary resolution support. As we'll see in the press release screenshots, the game natively supports widescreen and in addition to 1x1. One one. Planoa's animations were altered as well. Meanwhile, level geometry and effects were simplified, the wind bullet has more range, jumps look floatier, some enemies were removed, and there seems to be more time for the stone multiplier. The voice acting is gone too, outside of Klonoa's, and the music has a different sound to it depending on the device. Here's a sample from the gameplay video. The remake of Klonoa 1 was started right after the merger of Bandai and Namco and was headed by key staff of the original. That being said, this remake was primarily developed by Payon, who've worked on Nintendo IPs before, including the DK games after Rare but before Retro. As we'll see, the goal of this remake was to make changes to give the game wider appeal while adding content to satisfy hardcore fans. Outside of Japan, the Door to Phantom Isle subtitle was dropped, but otherwise there's nothing to really know as far as localization goes. This remake of the game offers new post-game content. There's mirrored levels, new challenge areas in every level, a time attack mode for bosses, cutscene playback, a model viewer, and unlockable costumes including a Klonoa 2 outfit, Klonoa 1 outfit, and summer wear. The script was totally rewritten, conversations with characters last longer, and notably, Klonoa talks significantly less. The gameplay is not one-to-one -one with the original, nor is it really trying to be, thanks to increased screen real estate, a taller Klonoa design, and that new player accommodation. Gameplay elements changed include tweaked movement speed but toned down momentum while moving and when stopping, increased attack range, higher and longer jumps, and the removal of coyote jumping. The difficulty of the game was toned down across the board. You've got more health from 6 hits to 10 hits, level adjustments like the 2-2 boss pit was removed or the 5-2 boss having more health, optional tutorial signs that you can just walk past, and some enemies were either moved, replaced, or simply removed. Legacy bugs, skips, and clips are obviously gone, but the game still carries its own host of these things. Being a Wii game, there are several controller options. There's the Wii mode horizontally, the nunchuck setup, classic controller, and GameCube controller. There's optional motion controls as well to toss enemies or use this new whirlwind move that slows down enemies. But you can also do that with a button. The visuals, from models to animations to effects, were entirely recreated from scratch. Environments are fully remodeled with varying levels of faith to the original levels, pre-rendered cutscenes are now presented as in-game cutscenes and generally are underwhelming compared to the original cutscenes, especially the ending, and characters are redesigned. Klonoa himself was given a completely new, taller design that, as we have said, influenced how the game plays. Music in the game remains untouched, but the Phantomalian language was revoiced, and there were several dubbed language options added. Hey there, I'm Baloo, the stone mason. Who were the two of you? Well, this is Klonoa. He's from Wind Village, and my name is Yupo. This is the songstress, Lefice. Well done, Joker. Oh, 
Oh, it was my pleasure, Lord Gaddius. Klonoa 2 Lunatea's Veil released on the PS2 and among the several regions that the game released in, there's nothing much of note except of course that the game and PAL regions at 50Hz run slower. The only thing to really be aware of from the game is there's a two-player mode in the game where a second player can give player one an extra jump. So with that all said, we can move on to Klonoa Fantasy Riviri series, the remaster of the Wii version of 1 and the PS2 version of 2. This remaster collection is effectively a port of both games into Unity, sporting a modern coat of paint. So Klonoa 1 scraps the Wii version's cutscenes in favor of recreations of the PS1 cutscenes and audio with a few exceptions. Klonoa 2, meanwhile, just had some minor script revisements. Content from the Wii version of Klonoa 1, like the mirrored levels, individual level challenges, and the Summerwear costume were cut. While you can't unlock the Klonoa 2 outfit in Klonoa 1 anymore, it should be DLC down the line, because right now it was a pre-order bonus only in Asia territories, but for now the digital version comes with the costume and there's a $20 bundle of other costumes. Klonoa 2's post-game unlockables remain untouched, in addition to a cutscene viewer, and a Klonoa 1 outfit was also part of the those pre-order outfits. Both games feature their unlockable hard modes as well as a new easy mode. Easy mode has a longer range wind bullet, gives you more hits before dying, and infinite lives. It also has unspoken differences too, like some bosses have less health and more iframes. Both games also feature co-op, though once again it's merely just player 2 providing an extra jump. And no, natively you can't use the keyboard as player 2 if you're using the controller for player 1. As far as exploits, skips, or clips are concerned, Concerned, a number of them were either fixed or stopped by new invisible ceilings, but there's also a whole slew of new tricks as well anyway. Tutorials are full pop-ups now, but they can be turned off since they aren't totally necessary for either game. So we've got some interesting minute gameplay changes that have an impact on how precise you have to aim and shoot the wind bullet compared to the prior versions. If you haven't played them before, this may not be a big deal. It's inevitably subjective though. There seem to be hitbox changes and there's input lag concerns for Switch players, which will bother some people more than others, but I believe the core gameplay change to how these games play is the altered frame data of the Wind Bullet. I'll put the numbers on screen, but I'll keep the summary simple. For Klonoa 1 in the remaster, the shorter ranged Wind Bullet shoots even faster than the Wii version and takes even longer to return to Klonoa. Additionally, on easy, you've got the Wii version's Wind Bullet just about one to one. Klonoa 2's frame data nerfs are more straightforward. The Wind Bullet shoots faster than on PS2, but takes just as long to return to Klonoa. And on easy, the Wind Bullet is out for just as long as it was in the original. Also, in both the Wii and PS2 games, the Wind Bullet eased into its peak, so it spent more frames closer to its peak. What all this means is that you have to be more precise in aiming the Wind Bullet, or else you'll either miss or get hit when you wouldn't have before in both games, because the Wind Bullet in both games shoots too fast, and more time is wasted on the Wind Bullet returning to you. Now for Klonoa 2, other factors such as momentum, movement speed, and all that seem to be identical to the original game, at least as far as I can tell from my test so the rest of the gameplay changes we'll discuss are only for Klonoa 1. So rather than redesigning the levels of Klonoa 1 to accommodate the shorter Klonoa with shorter range, which would understandably be basically redesigning the entire game, Little Klonoa now jumps as high and moves as fast as Big Klonoa. You still can't coyote jump in the level changes like for the bots in 2-2 remain, but some enemies and enemy placements were updated again to be more faithful to the PS1 version. Momentum in Klonoa 1 seems almost entirely absent now when you stop. You still move faster down slopes, of course, but Klonoa stops on a dime, except on certain surfaces like moving platforms, which doesn't feel intentional. Last note on gameplay is that when Klonoa jumps, there's no consistent shadow indicating where he's going to land like in prior versions and every other platformer game. Instead, there's a real-time shadow that's either hard to see or not there at all, with some exceptions like in Baloo's Tower, thankfully. There's been other gameplay factors I've seen discussed among players, such as the 
time for gem multipliers, but testing these things, they seem to just be placebo and are actually identical to how they were before. The art styles of both games have been radically reworked. We've got more modern shaders with flatter cell shading and vibrant colors, more detailed environments with added props and animations, character designs in Klonoa 1 were reverted back to their PS1 designs, and there's updated UI that, while consistent, retains themes of each game. Whether or not the lighting is an improvement is subjective, since it's a radically different look rather than a refinement of the looks the games already had. Some scenes might look better with the old lighting while others can shine under the new look. Both games oddly have a handful of mouth, eye, and finger animations that are either missing, covered up, or interpolated incorrectly. Planoa himself also had some of his animations interpolated weirdly too, which is the most prominent example. We should discuss performance too. The games are 60 FPS on every console except for Switch and Xbox One S, where they can struggle a bit to hit 60, more so on Switch of course. So much so that it could be responsible for the perceived input lag. On PC, the games support uncapped frame rates, but some minor physics in Klonoa 1 are tied to FPS. Casually, the only significant things are menus and transition speeds, and the effect of gravity on Klonoa when jumping. Jumps are subtly more floaty at higher FPS, Inversely, jumps don't go as high at lower FPS. And yes, this affects the Switch and Xbox One S versions as well. Planoa 2's only issue with frame rates higher than 60 is the speed of menus and transitions. And I think it's worth mentioning that loading times are not really notable on any version of the game, except Xbox One S for some reason. Resolution-wise, the games are 720p on handheld for Switch, and 1080p everywhere else except Xbox Series S, where it's 1440p, and PS5 and Xbox Series X, where it's 4K. PC can go up to 4K, but does not support ultra-wide natively. And for Steam Deck users, there is no 800p. Other settings in the PC version include basic things you'd expect, and notably the post-processing bloom. If you don't like the look of it, you can turn it off. Additionally, there is a pixel filter on all platforms, which has pretty surprising results. It doesn't look that bad, though I wouldn't ever play with this filter because I think it blends colors together too much. The music for the games remained totally untouched once again, and all the dubbed voice acting was removed. Sound effects and voices pull from a variety of sources from the compressed PS1 to PS2 and Wii versions of the games. All this mixed sourcing brings along some minor but notably odd audio balancing. And also, the music in Klonoa 1 is, for some reason, mono instead of stereo. So while the remake of the first Klonoa follows the original pretty closely, it makes enough changes to where the original PS1 version holds its own identity. Given the game's length, it might even be worth going back to it if you have the means of doing so, on top of playing the remaster. In fact, I think the Fantasy Reverie collection would have benefited by including the original PS1 version emulated. The Wii version holds more content, though the value of that content is subjective, and the remaster is closer to the original game in many regards. Planoa 2, meanwhile, has a different art style and slightly tweaked Wind Bullet to consider, but overall accessibility to the original games is a big factor for this one too. I don't usually do action games, so we got extra gritty with some of the details here, both to explain the gameplay differences and to debunk a lot of placebo differences being reported. If you've been following so far, don't be too overwhelmed or stressed over things if you're not sure whether or not to care about them. Go off of what matters to you personally. For those that have played already, feel free to share which versions you've been playing and why, considering the video should give everyone a common ground for discussion. Remember, there is no wrong way to play either Klonoa game. Now, I'll be back to JRPGs with the Live Alive port review up next. There was a huge channel update, so check the community tab if you aren't caught up on things, and in the meantime, find me on Twitter or support me on Patreon. And until next time, thanks for watching.